In this video, I'm going to show you how to read and write to a Mayfair Classic EV1 tag with 7 byte UID. These tags are fairly new to the market and you can buy from internet. And I'm going to show you two websites where I buy some of my tags. So in UK, you can buy from a website called Infocus ID. And you can see that the Mayfair Classic EV1 are uh, not that expensive. And what you have to keep in mind is when you buy these tags, you have to ask for a 7 byte UID. So I'm going to tell you more about that in a short while. So, but keep in mind, so because this, this page doesn't mention anything about 4 byte or 7 byte, but you have to ask for them. And one more site, you know, it's called uh, uh, Modulus Car Printer Co.uk. And here also you can buy. And price wise, I think both the sites are the same. So if you look at internet, you can see that Mifair Classic EV1 is going to replace Mifair Classic Tax. So there, there are so many reasons. And one of the reasons is the Mifair Classic Tax, they run out of uh, UIDs. And there are also some other differences like these uh, cards are very sensitive and they also come with a different uh, uh, personalization feature as well. So this EV1 tag comes in three variants with the 4 byte UID. This is very similar to the Mifair Classic Tax. The 7 byte UID, the one I'm going to show you in this video, and the 4 byte random ID. But however, when you buy these tags, you have to ask for a specific version. Either you want a 4 byte UID, a 7 byte, or a 4 byte random ID. And the documentation also says that you can configure any 7 byte UID to 4 byte UID or to random ID. So I, I don't want to speak more about this because I have not tried this configuration. It's also called as personalization. But the internet says these tags are configurable and they are configurable only once. The activation of these tags are very similar to the Mifair Ultralight. You know Mifair Ultralight is a 7 byte a UID tag and it goes through two anti-collision cycles. The first anti-collision cycle you get the UID the number 88 followed by UID 0, 1 and 2. In the second anti-collision sequence you get the remaining four UID. So for all activation purpose or the activation commands you have to send the four bytes received during the last uh, anti-collision. In in our case, you know, it's going to be the last four bytes. You have we got it in the CL2, which is also same as the last four bytes of the UID. So in also it's very clearly mentioned in the documentation, which I'm going to uh, show you soon. So there is a nice documentation from NXP and. This documentation is, I would say, 85% very similar to the Mifair Classic Tax. And if you go to page number 20, there is a mention about the authentication. So what it says here is, so during the authentication, the 4 byte of the UID is passed. Keep in mind here, we still pass only 4 bytes, not the 7 bytes. And the table here, also mentions which four bytes you have to you have to send for authentication. So we'll be using this uh, sequence one. So the CL two that's the four bytes you got it during the anti collision two, or the last four bytes. So probably in the future I'm going to make a separate video, uh, which covers you know more of this uh, uh, configuration personalization details. So before that, I would like to take this opportunity to show you a new ACR122 reader I bought this today. 
and if you are following my previous videos I mentioned about some of the issues with uh, the readers you know we buy from some of the sellers and I showed in my previous video that uh, it was not able to recognize uh, some of the tags and this the this is I bought it from uh, the the distributors of ACS and the first thing I did was to make sure it runs on a PN532 and you can see that you can see that uh, this does have uh, the PN532 indeed uh, I already have a AS122 which I bought a couple of years ago and looks like the version has not changed it's more or less the same version which the version printed on this uh, board however when you read the version from the reader you get a, a higher number and this is what you know uh, I saw and so this one here you can see the serial number what I've got is much much you know uh, older than what you see here so so I'm confident that you know I got a latest uh, Acer 122 and from an authorized uh, distributor I did mention a few websites where you can buy but I bought this from uh, a website or a company called Comunitex and I think the price wise you know more or less you know the price of these uh, Acer 122s are the same wherever you or wherever you live just going to translate to English Okay, next I'm going to show you uh, how to use this uh, Mifair Ultralight, so not Mifair Classic 1KV17 by TYD. I would like to show you something before I start. So, for some reason, you can't buy these tags in uh, one a pack of 1 or 5. So, I wanted just one, uh, one or two or few cards, but I have to buy this uh, pack of 100. Okay, so just now got too many cards here probably I might sell this you know a uh, few cards in eBay now this software you already seen this thing uh, in all my previous videos and we have added this in the version 1.6.3 so I'm going to connect and I'm going to place a 7 byte UID tag so the first thing is all these connection happens using a PCSC and if you see the locks here so because I'm using the commands uh, of uh, ASR122 the command to get UID as you can see here I get 7 bytes UID and the, in the 7 bytes UID the first byte is 0, 04 which is uh, the manufacturer code of Philips or NXP so all these seven bytes are part of the UID and the ATR what you get here it's very similar to a classic uh, or the old tag and so we are going to authenticate so the authentication is successful and however if you see the commands what I have done in this in this uh, version of the software is for authentication I'm using the PN532 commands and if you have seen my or if you if you already have this software usually when you send this uh, PN532 command for authentication that is a command 60 we usually end up sending the 4 bytes so here also we, we, we still send 4 bytes however this is the last 4 bytes so you don't have to send the first 3 bytes so I tried now before I knew that I have to uh, send the last four bytes I've been playing around passing you know the first four bytes here or everything here and nothing worked for me next I'm going to show you uh, how to write to a UID changeable tag this has got nothing to do with the, the seven byte UID thing uh, however just to show that my new ACR122 reader writer uh, can also write to a, 
a UID changeable tag. Now this is a, a 4 byte so you can see the 4 bytes here. So the way we do this is we first authenticate you can see the authentication command sending the 4 bytes here and go to utilities. So I'm going to change the, the UID to D1 D2, D3, and D4. And if I say right, so it says UID changeable, okay. So now, once the UID is changed, you might hear a couple of uh, beep sounds. So that is because uh, the reader writer will go into this auto polling mode. Now, if I take it out and start all over again, you can see that the UID is changed to what we wanted D1, D2, D3, D4. So there's no problem with this uh, new router writer. So next I'm going to show how to use this uh, 7 byte UID using the PCSC authentication command. So for that I'm going to use the new version of ASR122 software which you know uh, you might have already got it uh, for free. Uh, you 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 get this uh, when you buy this uh, software. Now this is the software called Acer One Two Two U Made Easy Version One Point Three, and I'm going to place this tag, the seven byte. Sorry, it's a four byte one. So I do have you know uh, this EV One Four Byte as well. So place the seven byte. The way the authentication works using the PCSC command is different. So, in theory, you first load the keys into the reader writer and instruct the reader writer to do the authentication. So, this software here, we try to avoid using the PN532 commands as much as possible. So, we try to do everything using the PCAC commands. I'm going to activate and you can see that um, the activation has written a 7 byte uh, UID and followed by you know they've got eight here and here this is this, this software is still in the early stage we just got uh, authentication read and write so if I give authenticate authenticate successful and if you look at these commands these are the PCSC commands where you first load the key so here you know the, the interesting bit of using PCSC command is we don't have to worry about sending this uh, four bytes last four bytes i think everything is taken care of uh, within uh, the firmware which is inside this acer 122 so that way you know, it's good and it's uh, reliable as well so the first step is load the keys this is the pcc uh, uh, command like a sudo apdu for accessing uh, the mefair classic tags and after that you indicate you want to authenticate then once that is done you can click here read and you can see that all the read commands are also using the PCC uh, uh, the commands of read binary so you don't see any PN532 commands so I think that's the difference in accessing the 7 byte UID using PN532 and uh, the ACR uh, or the PCC command using ACR122 probably can also try to write let's uh, try to write here uh, hope I got okay the right here is different sorry so it's, I'm going to write directly into this grid so you're going to see more videos on how to use this software and B1 B2 B3 B4 B5 B6 6 okay so here you can write a sector at a time so I'm going to write uh, write this sector so I got the right sector okay so you know I received all you know here also I'm using the update binary the PCC uh, command and if I take this tag and try to reactivate authenticate and read the sector can see that the right is also uh, working here. Yeah.